My name is Macario. Uh, I lead marketing at Jasper. We're here to talk to you about this thing called M2M or Internet of Things. Has anybody heard of it? Anybody at all? It's a small little thing. Um, so, you know, obviously at, at Jasper, uh, we've been in this business for quite some time. I'll talk a little bit about that. I want to share with you the one learning that we have that's over and over and over again. Uh, being in the business of, uh, of the Internet of Things. And just like everybody else in the room, we're very big believers on where this is going. We're seeing the tremendous acceleration that's happening as companies, products are embedding connectivity directly into their, into their products, their devices, and we're just seeing it explode, and it's affecting multiple, multiple industries. We've been fortunate enough to be in this business now for, for 10 years. Um, we have... Uh, we've supported uh, over 1,000 enterprises uh, across 20 different verticals. And the one thing that we've learned, the unassailable learning that we can see over and over and over again, is that you know, the Internet of Things is really not about things. It's about service. Companies are not just becoming connected companies, they're really becoming service businesses. Uh, let me give you some examples of what, of what we see. GE, GE Aviation in particular. This is a company that builds jet engines. They've been doing it for years, decades. Uh, they build these products, they go flying up in the air, they now have sensors so that the very moment that the plane lands, the information is collected uh, about how that engine performed in the air, is immediately sent to a service center. By the time the plane pulls up to the gate, they know exactly if a part is needed. Now, I live in San Francisco, uh, and yesterday my flight was delayed three and a half hours. I kid you not, and I actually had this slide. I was like, wow, they clearly did not have this particular engine on there. But what GE Aviation has now done is they provide a service to the airline industry because unscheduled delays and maintenance repairs cost them $8 billion a year. So GE Aviation is now a service company. General Motors, very famously with their uh, cars, a 100-year-old company, actually a 120-year-old company, now embeds connectivity inside of their cars, and they automatically notify the, the, an ambulance if you're stuck in an accident. They can automatically send out software updates over the air. We heard about that a little bit this morning, so that you don't have the burden of having to go into a shop. They tell you how well you're driving. If you live in Minnesota, if you live in the Nordics, and it's really cold outside, you want to be able to remotely start your car so it's not freezing when you actually enter into it, that's a service. GM has become a service company in addition to becoming a product company. Even the, the lowly copier inside of, uh, inside of every single office building uh, Konica Minolta has now embedded connectivity inside of their copiers so that they can now proactively fix problems before they occur. They don't have to uh, worry the IT manager to figure out what's wrong with the copier. And they can now start to move to a service-based business model. So Konica Minolta is now becoming a copier as a service company, being able to charge based on the number of copies that they make. And this transformation from a product company to a service company is actually, it seems really simple, it seems pretty intuitive, but it's actually a really hard thing for most product organizations to do. When you think about the responsibility that these companies have, um, they now have the burden and the responsibility of making sure that that consumer or their customer or their partner has access to all the real-time content information that they promised them. They deliver on those service expectations and SLAs. If something doesn't work, they have to figure out why. If they're now changing their business model to a recurring revenue business, they have to be able to bill for that constantly. And they have that responsibility of now becoming a service provider. And as we've heard throughout the day, there's no better service providers than the mobile operators. And together, our job is to make sure that these enterprises have the tool set they need to be able to handle these kinds of responsibilities, not just uh, for one device in one particular country, but across the world. So we did an analysis of the enterprises that we have on our platform today. We said, well, what is it that it really takes? What, what do people actually do? So the average company should expect that they're going to have to reconfigure their network rules for every single device at least 24 times per year. That's, if you're a modest company that is managing maybe 100,000 connected devices, that's 2.4 million touches that you're going to have to handle every single year. And there's a malfunction, may not be a complete failure, but some type of malfunction is one out of every 100 devices that's going to require some type of analysis to go figure out what's wrong with this. So this is a tremendous amount of effort and a tremendous burden. The business models are also radically different. And 
and in fact, they're very much still a trial and error. The average enterprise has, on our, at least in our experience working with the enterprises we support, five pricing options, five different tariffs that they manage for every single device type that they have. So that's a constant juggling of the different kinds of business models to make this business go. Constant set of touches they're going to have to do to keep this real-time network of connected products alive out there. And they have to do that in a single country where they initially deploy, in a single region where they initially deploy, uh, and then certainly out there all over the world. Um, and this is a tremendous amount of work. We've been very fortunate to be able to support uh, the conversion and the transformation of product businesses to service businesses for a whole range of different companies, many of whom that you see here. And it's really made possible in cooperation with our own partner operators. Um, so we're, you know, we, these are the kinds of operators that we work with today. And in fact, you'll see many of the leaders that are out there in the M2M or IoT space. Um, so you know, when you think about, well, what does it take to really run a, an M2M deployment for an enterprise? There's a lot of technology behind the scenes, um, a lot of fantastic technology innovators in this room who are helping solve for that. But the one thing that we come back to over and over again, when we understand, when we see which enterprises are successful and which ones are not successful, it keeps coming back to this one recurring theme, which is that the ones who recognize that this is a service business and act accordingly across all facets of their business, not just the technology components, are the ones that are finding the most success in IoT. Because in, in the end, the Internet of Things is really not about things. Uh, it is about service. We believe that fundamentally we're seeing enough activity now that every business will eventually become an IoT business. If you're a product company, you're going to embed connectivity into your product. If you're a content and service provider, you're going to want to have access to those products because they're conduits for your content and service. And every IoT business becomes a service business. So uh, I encourage all of us in this room, mobile operators, device manufacturers, module manufacturers, application providers to come together to recognize this and help enterprises be hugely successful as service businesses. So we find that's the one thing that works over and over and over again. We saw so many examples even earlier, uh, the gentleman from Transitel right before talked about Amazon Kindle. That was a transformative product for our own segment, for our own business. The reason why it was transformative wasn't because of the business model, wasn't because of the technology, it's because they showed how one complete package can provide an amazing service to a consumer. Amazon got it. GM gets it. GE gets it. These companies understand that, and they're the ones that are being most successful, and I encourage you all to please consider this in, uh, in the way that we all work together. Thank you.